and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Rosie Henshaw. If you're new here, then welcome. So good to meet you. And if you're already existing, guys, then thank you so much for coming back. I really do appreciate it. Grab yourselves a nice cup of tea and some snacks. Mine is a Dr. Pepper Zero. <laughs> I know, it's not really appropriate for a mug, but you know, here we are, and I'm drinking it out of it anyway. And um, so this is my charity shop find. This is the Dream House Collection ones. So this is the Keeper's Lodge. Um, and this is the Emma Bridget one. I think I got it for there, like two pounds in the charity shop. Um, so today's video is a much awaited Poundland upcycle. So what I do is I go into Poundland, I will link the other videos below that I've done on this because some of you have loved them. Um, and I've got to say, they're probably my highly request, most highly requested video to do. The only reason I don't do them more often is just because Poundland seem to have the same kind of stuff in. I don't want to keep bringing you the same ideas. When I saw some of the new bits, so I was like, we can do an Easter, like spring style version. So what I've done is I've gone to the pound shop, I've spent 11 pound in there and we are going to make lots of beautiful Easter decor that's gonna look gorgeous. There is one thing that you could make that doesn't have to be Easter. Obviously you can apply these ideas to other different things as well around your home just as decor. Um, so yes, I thought I'd get in. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is probably my most favorite thing and it's gonna cost you four pound 50 to make, um, but I love it and I think it's gorgeous. And do you know what? I just I just think it's gonna look really beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by showing you what I picked up for it. So I got two of the plates in there. So you have the plain white plates. Um, so I got the larger one and the smaller one. They're just their pure collection. These were a pound each. Really good, you can get these in any color that you want. I just thought white would work really, really well. And they've got like a nice little lip on them, the upturn, really lovely, but not super. You know, like when they're a bit more like bowl shape or very thick, I like that they're nice and thin, look really nice. And um, I've also got a candlestick holder. These are the famous candlestick holders. I did make a little cake stand with these before. I also made like a little hurricane, um, like candle holder with these, like with a glass bit here. Like I said, I'll link all the videos below because you just love the hurricane. So many of you made it and tagged me um, on your Instagram with it. Um, so I've got one of these. This is one pound 50 now, they used to be a pound. So that's three pound 50 so far. And then you're gonna need a little bunny if you're making this an Easter version, which I think you should, because it's very, very beautiful. So they had different styles of these bunnies. So they've got like ones that are sitting down, ones that are hopping. I like the one where the bunny is sat on top like this. I just prefer this. I'm gonna put my glue gun on as well, get that on, um, to start heating up actually, put it in. Didn't think of doing that first. Um, that ready and I've just got a tester pot of paint that I'm going to do this so all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these now I'm thinking of leaving the bunny gold I was thinking of doing these white with some spray paint that I already had um, but I thought do you know what when I used the stony ground tester pot the other day so many of you loved it sorry I've got to grab a little butt knife just to open my can so it's a pound so any tester pot or any paint you've got around your home will work well if you want a beige colour Wilkinson's do pound tester pots have a little look I've got two oranges for another craft that I'm gonna show you in a minute, but the, they come like this and they're literally a pound. So you may as well. I managed to get these in my b and a few months back now, the pounds, the farm ball ones, as you can see. I've had a few people like, no way did you get a farm ball tester pot for a pound, Rosie, that just didn't happen, but it did. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start painting the beige on. Now, like I say, you could just spray paint these any color that you want. Um, but I'm gonna start by painting the little egg part because I don't want the yellow. Now, if you want a pastel color and you want it really, really Easter traditional with the, the yellow, then obviously by all means, don't paint this bit. You don't have to. I'm just going to, because I'm going for a bit more muted um, in some of the rooms and I'm just gonna try and make some of these decor pieces that you would see. You know like the high-end shops where they sell high-end Easter decor? It's never really in the pastel colors, but it's always a lot of money. Um, so I thought I'd try and imitate that kind of look, but on a budget. And in actual fact, I don't think you're gonna see anything on them shops quite as nice as this. It's gonna look so lovely. Um, definitely not for £4.50. And you get to have fun making it too. So right, I'm gonna paint this. It probably need a little second coat on this and I probably could have done with using a smaller brush. But hey ho, I've got so much stuff in my shed that I'm sorting out um, and getting prepared. I need to have a little boot sale really and sell some bits of vintage. I've got some loads of clothes and stuff, baby clothes on there. And I normally donate to charity shops, but my local charity shops are so full, they're not accepting anything um, at the moment. So I'm just gonna pop this down on a piece of paper just so that it can, um, dry and doesn't damage the work surfaces. We pop that down just to dry it over here. And as you can see, I just think that looks a little bit nicer with the gold as well. 
And then I'm going to go in and paint the candlestick. Now with the candlestick, you can go over this solidly or you can sort of brush some of this on so that you can still see some of the metal coming through. That might be quite nice um, to do that. So that gives it a bit more of a rustic look. I'm going to just cover this in, in its entirety because I want this to be a solid colour on this. Might even have to speed this little bit up. <laughs> Especially while the hot glue gun is um, heating up. I love the smell of paint. Is that a weird thing to admit? I absolutely love the smell of paint. I had a little quick paint in my um, utility room. We'd done it a little bit lighter in there because it was really dark. And when I go in there now, when I open the door, I love it because it's like the smell of laundry plus paint. It's like the best combination of smells physically known. Right. And then I just need to go around the edge. Just a little fiddly bit, but it's good because you can pop your fingers in the little hole bit here. Um, and paint round so you don't get it all on your fingers. And that again will need a second coat, but I think that will be it. Obviously, it depends what paint you're using. If you've done this with a spray paint in the garden, nice and airy in an airy place, you this would be done basically straight away. Um, I'm going to get another piece of paper because I've got a feeling they're going to end up touching and smudging one another. I'll pop this to the side here. And with the magic of editing, <laughs> I'm joking, I'm not going to edit this. I might speed this little bit up, cut this down. No, I'm only joking. We're going to do our Blue Peter thing that we do. So we are going to come back to this craft <laughs> in a minute because you know what? I, don't, I really, I, I struggle with editing. I really do. I really find it a struggle. And I sit there and I get very confused and I don't really know what I'm doing. And there's been lots of times where the music don't meet and yeah, all sorts of stuff. Um, so I'm going to start taking the stickers off of these. <laughs> and hope that they dry within the two seconds so that I can show you what I'm going to do. I will show you at the end of the video anyway, so if I have to touch up, as always, I will show you at the end of the video what they look like and I will style them out and they'll look really cute. Um, so you can see what they look like. You can soak these spells, get stickers off, but they're relatively easy, these stickers, to get off these ones. Peeling off lovely. So many people have different hacks, don't they? Like you can use the hairdryer to make it less sticky. To come off, you can just soak it in some soapy water. I find using the actual sticker itself and doing that gets the sticker off lovely. Right, don't know if you even saw, I just press the sticker on it. Got the sticker on my hand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble these with my hot glue gun. So I'm going to start with the large plate at the bottom and I'm going to take this sticker off here. That's on the bottom. Make sure that's off completely. And I'm going to actually glue this to the centre of this plate this way. Now, obviously, you can just have one tier and do it that way. I just think this is going to be much nicer, especially for Easter. If you're making little homemade, uh, homemade treats and stuff like that, it'll be much nicer. And then I'm going to glue the top plate to here. And then I'm going to be putting the bunny and gluing the bunny on the top. And when it all comes together, it's going to be a beautiful tiered Easter cake stand, which will just look really, really lovely. Now, like I say, you can spray these white and it will just be really beautiful and white. The only problem I find is because these plates are glazed and most um, spray paint, even if you get a satin, they're very, very paper white. And this white has kind of like a creamy tone to it, like an off-white. So it never really matches unless you want to paint the plate. But I find the plates are nice because they're wipeable and not matte. So that's what I always really struggle with. So I think... It might be easier just to go for a different colour. So I'm going to glue these, assemble it, touch this up, and I'll show you at the end because actually I think that this little cake stand, little Easter one with a little Easter egg on the top, is going to look really, really beautiful. And obviously you could do these different colours. A sage green might look really beautiful with this. I've just gone for beige because I think that will look really, really lovely. So I'm going to glue that with my hot glue gun. I would recommend the hot glue, once it dries, it goes hard and it could peel off. So you could put hot glue and then maybe like a UH... Um, glue, what's it called? The UHT glue as well at the same time. So the hot glue will be an instant grab, but then also once it's dried, the super glue will stick as well. Obviously, just make sure because you want to make sure that it's food safe. Um, but I think it's going to look really lovely. So I'm going to show you that completely finished at the end. You might even see me topping it up in the video. Depends on depends on what my editing skills are going to be today because I always say to Gary, I'm really, really bad at it. 
So another thing we're gonna show you, this is a really, really simple thing to show you. Now in the pound shop, they have lots of really pretty Easter cards and therefore for a pound. This one's lovely as a card. I don't really think it's gonna be much for what we're gonna be making it for. But when I saw um, this, um, is it daffodil? Yeah, daffodil one, it says happy Easter in it. Also this Easter wishes here, that's pink, really lovely patterns. And then we also got this one, which I thought was really, really retro. Easter egg time. I thought these were really cute. Now these are four for a pound. Now what I thought these would be really good for is to go in these. Now Pep and Co are obviously part of Poundland. So in there they have a little bit of homeware. They have um, like some clothes and stuff, but they're in all of the Poundlands. So these photo frames will be in all the Poundlands. Not necessarily the clothes, but the, um, the frames will be. They have these in wood, they have these in black. I just thought the white frames would be really good. So I managed to get these white frames. They've even got like the little inserts now as well. Um, and these are the seven by five frames. And these are only a pound. So what I thought would be really good is, is if you're making like a little like buffet for food, or you know, you've got made little treats for a little Easter party. These would even look really nice just hung up for Easter as a little bit of decor, a bit of seasonal decor. Now this is really simple. I'm just gonna be taking the stickers off of the, um, oh sorry, bit of concentration. I've got like gel nails on, like gel paint, and it's really hard because it makes your nails thick and you can't get that lip for the sticker <laughs> if it's really, really flat. Should have prepared this earlier, shouldn't I? I'd done a bit more of a Blue Peter moment. But well, I've got to get the sticker off, obviously you just won't see the effect of it. So I'm gonna take them out of this, put, keep this for later, because these are perfect to go in other frames. I'm going to use this one and I thought this would look really, really lovely. And I'm going to pop back in my little wooden stand. Now, by all means, you don't have to. They have little hanging bits on these. So you can take these off if you want and hang these on the wall. But how cute is this going to look? If I stand this up with loads of Easter egg cakes and stuff like that for a buffet, or literally just hung up with seasonal frames to make it look like a bit of Easter, I might even pop it along my back ledge where my pictures are. Like I say, I'll show you all styled up later in the last bit of the video. But... That's like a really cute print and it's literally cost two pound. You can do this at Christmas time. You can do this for any occasion, Valentine's, whatever you want. They have some really lovely prints. But also if you don't really like the plain pattern of these, this is very modern looking. You can always add them to frames that you've already got. So I've got a frame that I got from the charity shop. It was um, like a, I think it was a bright gold color. Um, but I got it and I ended up painting it in like a sage green and going over it with the white. A bit dusty because it's been down the shed because I like to change out my stuff every now and again. I change my decor. It makes me feel like I've got something new even though I haven't. So I should give this a really little dust quickly. I think it's going to be the same. You're going to get the same effect and you can pop one of the cards in and it's a bit more of a traditional frame. Pop that on the side. That would probably be a bit more in keeping with my decor. Put that over there. It will look really, really cute. And it just looks like a little Easter print. You can pop these away. And then if you want to change these up, you just take the card out and you can use them, put them in your little card stash and write out Easter cards for someone. So there's no waste in buying these whatsoever. The photo frames you can upcycle into other things. The, the frames you can keep and just change them out every season. And if you get bored of the print, like I say, you can obviously just gift these as the cards. My favorite prints though probably are these and this one in there. Really, really lovely. But I think they're gonna look really retro, especially if you've got like bright colors or you've got like, um, you know, like a, a picture gallery wall that would look really cute or even in the kids room if we decorate for easter i thought that would be a really cute little idea so when i saw them i thought i've got to show you because i know i'm going to pop them out when i do my little easter buffet and i know that people say oh where's the prints from and actually they're just cards from the pound shop from poundland yet again they also have i'm going to give this a second coat while i chat to you guys they also have so i've done very similar craft to this before but this was for autumn um, and basically, I got some of the um, Hessian bunting. Now, I said to you guys, run, don't walk, get some of the Hessian bunting because you can always make this for all different occasions, very much like with the frames and stuff. So when something's at all occasions, so you can use it for pumpkins, um, add leaves in autumn. I think we used a stencil and made like an autumn sign and added some like rustic leaves to it. But this bunting in the pound shop is a pound. I say that because not everything is a pound in there. Right, let's have a little second coat <laughs> before we glue it. I can get a second coat to my to my little uh, candle stick as well. It's dry pretty quickly. It dries a lot nicer as well. 
than it does when it's wet. It's a much nicer colour. It dries much nicer when it's dry than when it's wet. Some of the things I come out with, honestly, I'm surprised you're still here. You must be like dumbfounded, like what is she even speaking about? I get so carried away. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I've got some of this Hessian bunting. So this was a pound and you get eight pennants, I believe, you're eight flags and it's 2.5 meters. Now, I bought a few packets of this because I've got obviously the coronation coming up, or we've all got the coronation coming up, but you know what I mean? Um, so I'm gonna be making some more bunting for that situation, <laughs> for what's happening in that little celebration. I've got my autumn one. Like I say, I will pop in the description any of my panel, because I know there's a few new of you guys here, um, but I will pop in the description any of my pan line up cycles because that will include them as well. Um, and there's some really good ideas for like, if you wanna just literally spend a few pounds, because we all know if you go into a craft shop, sometimes it can cost a fortune actually just getting the craft and accessories. That's why I like to do some of these videos so that not only is it a craft, but it's also really cheap and attainable for people to buy the items in the first place. Um, and they have like glue guns in the pound shop. Um, and to be honest with you, I know people will disagree if they're like hardcore crafters, but I think a glue gun is kind of a glue gun. I have used like the cordless ones and yeah, sometimes I get a bit hotter and they're a little bit better, but to be honest with you, you're gonna get the same sort of outcome. Um, so you don't really need all the gear. No idea, you know what I mean? So you just, um, right, that's got a second coat on it. That looks lovely. Right, so go to the pound shop. This is what I'm saying. Now they do have these in the pound shop. However, I picked these up in the works. These were one pound 50, but I made sure they had these in the pound shop for a pound. Very, very slightly different. In actual fact, the bunny I wanted from the pound shop. And for some reason I thought it was the same pattern as what I had on these. So in the pound shop, you get an egg, you get a chick, you get a bunny, but the bunny is like, you know, like a side profile of the bunny. <laughs> I'm gonna do the bunny. The bunny's bums up and the ears are back. It's a much nicer print of the bunny rather than just the face. And they also have the carrot, but the carrot's a bit wider than this. Um, so just to let you know, and they're only a pound in there. So you can go get your little cutters and get yourself your bunting. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some Easter bunting. Now, there's two ways I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna do this with just a stencil, because I feel like that's enough. That's more than that's more than enough. I've got a really itchy nose, guys. Does that mean I've got money coming? Or is that when you get an itchy hands? I don't know. Or is it when you when someone no, someone's thinking about these hot ears, isn't it? Please tell me what the wife's telling you to get an itchy nose. Someone's gonna be like, when you get an itchy nose, it means your nose hairs are too long, trim them. <laughs> oh, no, Rosie, an itchy nose is just an itchy nose. So yeah, for a pound, you can keep this as is, but I just think it's really nice to upcycle and it's so simple. You probably could make this, if you know like at Christmas time, they sell the Hessian sacks for a pound, you probably could make much larger bunting if you just bought some jute string and you know, you can tie these together, make more if you want. I just think it's easy. It's already been sewn together. It's already been done. Because I find sometimes if you glue Hessian, it goes through the gap, so it's better to be stitched. Um, but what I'm gonna do, it's got eight pennants on it. We are going to decorate this to make this really beautiful Easter bunting. And simply, all I'm gonna be doing is stenciling, which, which will make it two pound. You might even already have a stencil. You can obviously hand draw this, or if you've got a printer, go online, have a look, or if you've got a card, anything with a bunny pattern on it, you can just draw around it, cut it out, and then draw around it onto the banner, like this. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna use this as a stencil, so I'm gonna put something up, so a little bit higher. I've got some cookbooks here. I'm gonna use these to step me up a bit. Right, let's see if I and promoting these right and then put a little bit of paper underneath to protect your side put my bunting down and all i'm going to do is put my stencil down and then inside the stencil with the same paint i'm going to use the same beiges like i say i'm just going to stencil inside the actual bunny going right up to the edge i'll show you what it looks like in a sec but just make sure you press down on the stencil firmly so you're making sure to not get out of the gap and you can wash these stencils after Right, just holding it down. You can use any different colours. What's nice is as well as you could do like ombre effect with this, you could dab some of it and then dab some different colours in it as well. And it just, will, you'll end up with a bunny stencil on these really cheaply. And obviously you can keep these cookie cutters and make, you know, like clay ornaments or cakes, cookies, whatever you want to do. Like, you know, when you put the icing on top of the cakes and then I'm just going to lift it up. Oh, there's a bit missing there, I can see. I've missed a little area. Make sure you've done it all first. Take it off. It's a little bit opaque in that area there. 
and then you're going to end up with some bunnies now obviously it's still seeping through so i'm going to lay it down to dry you could even put like a little pom-pom on this to make little bunny towels what i am going to do is i'm i've spent a bit more because i'm going to make this look a little bit more expensive so i'm going to stencil a couple of these every other one is going to be stenciled and then i've got a lovely little id which only is going to cost you a pound to make this to a three pound bunny but it's going to look so much nicer so i'm going to stencil this like i say every other one so i might do like a bunny then a chick, then an egg, like do vice versa, do the patterns, which I will do, but I'm going to leave that down to dry just for a second while I show you what I'm going to be sticking on the empty bunting in between. Right, let's put this to the side. It's like I'm going to show you all later, isn't it, at the end, what they look like. So they have in the pound shop for a pound. These are in the little Easter bit where they can make the, like the bonnets. And they have these little carrots. Now, these are really lovely carrots. You could glue these on as they are, and just to be a bit extra. But they're like little fluffy carrots. They actually remind me of what's it. So I think because I'm such a big eater, I'm going to have to adjust these. Otherwise, I would want to um, eat them. I'm going to also take the stem out. Now, the stems are perfect. You do not need to get rid of these stems whatsoever. Keep them stems on it. The only reason I'm changing these is because I've got so many IKEA plants and bits that I cut bits off of because I make wreaths. I preferred the look of this little rosemary. I'm going to get my scissors and I'm going to put these little rosemary stems in them instead. It ain't going to make much difference, but you know what? I'm just, like I say, I am a bit extra with certain things and some things I think, oh, I prefer the look of that. I'm going to trim that down, but this is a step that you really don't need to do, but I am going to show you what else I'm going to do to the carrots. I might even need to stab something in that to get that in first because it's not going in this is what just serves it serves you right for trying to alter the carrot rosie but i just prefer the look of, no i don't actually do you know what trial and error girlfriend that don't look as nice as that does lesson learned it doesn't keep the carrots as they are <laughs> you don't need to change the carrots however i am gonna put some twine on these i might even do this and be like actually do you know what don't put the twine on them, but we've had enough time while our things dry. Right, let's get our twine open. Now, I've got a big pack of these twines. I think these were from the works. I think that was only like two pounds, but loads of them. But you can use any kind of string. Now, you could use any string or jute ribbon and then just go over these in orange paints. You haven't got to have our orange twine or anything like that. You can even paint over these if you wanted to. I put my hot glue gun on earlier. I'm just going to pop a tiny bit of glue in the middle here. I'm going to do a little line halfway down the bottom. Where's my other glue stick gone? I think I dropped that on the floor. I did. Oh, pop that in because then it will help push that out. <laughs> a little line halfway down so I can start going round. There we go. Before it dries, I'm going to put a little bit of my twine on. I'm going to go round these because I just think the twine's just going to like, I don't know, upgrade it a bit, make it look much nicer. You don't need to do this and you haven't got to do it like really close knit either because obviously because it's got the orange underneath, it hasn't got to be like a closed twine. You can have little gaps in between and it ain't going to make no difference. Pop another little bit of glue. The back hasn't got to be as neat either because like I say, I am little glue see this is what i mean this is a hobby craft one and the glue sticks keep falling out of it gordon bennett where does that saying come from do you reckon there's a guy called gordon gordon bennett who used to mess loads of things up and like they'd be like oh gordon bennett like they knew it was him that had caused the carnage do you know what i mean where does that saying even come from right we're getting to the tip top of my carrot and they're just looking adorable. Adorbs. It's looking adorbs here, guys. Have a little bit of glue. I say a little bit of glue, and then she puts the whole mound of glue on. It's okay, it's okay. I'm professional. I'm pretending to be anyway. It's fine. Right, and then I'm going to trim it. Because, come on, let's face it. Let's be, let's be real here. These do look really cute. But these look... Let me glue down much more expensive 
and pretty. And it's only, do you know what I mean? It's a really cheap fix. So then I'm gonna glue these on. So this is what I was thinking, maybe my rosemary will look better now with my little expensive look version. Will it or won't it? Will it or won't it? No, it looks like a little green fountain. Yeah, just admit that you've been defeated with that one, Rosie. Then I'm going to glue these on in between because I feel like this is just going to like, this is just going to make my bunting look much more expensive or like look like I've got it from TK Maxx when actually I haven't spent £12 in TK Maxx. I've made it. I've had the fun of making it and it's cost me £3 to make. Um, so I'm going to glue them all on. I'm going to make a few of them now. Oh, look at that rosemary. It keeps trying to come into my life. It's like, Rosie, stick us on. We all love it. It will look really nice. Right. I'm going to put some more on. And then I've got a little mind-blowing hack if you want to make some carrot bunting, um, which is not actually got bunting attached, just actual carrot bunting. This is probably my favourite idea of all. Um, best till last, shall we say. Right, oh, I need to put a little bit of glue on the bottom. A little sneaky, sneaky bit of um, twine. I was like, no, it's not happening, Rose. I had a dream that I was on the Titanic last night and that I was Rose. And I kept saying to, <laughs> it was Jack, but it was Gary. It's a really weird dream. And Gary grew his hair out. I know why I dreamt this, because Gary grew his hair a little bit in lockdown, because he didn't obviously want to, but it was just one of them things. And then he shaved his hair, and then it, he looked weird with it shaved. And then he was like, I'm never shaving my hair again, now I'm letting it grow. And his hair grows really quick. Anyway, so he's growing his hair, and he ended up with this like, sort of McDonald M, you know, when the boy's hair grows long. And we went, we was pregnant, and we, um, we went for our gender scan. <laughs> And his hair was really long. And the other night, I was watching it back like, oh, this is so nice that we actually have these memories to look back on. And he was like, what on earth is the matter with my hair? Like, seriously, how did you let me go out like that? And I was like, babe, I think you look nice. But his hair was really long, and he does look strange a bit long. Like, I think he looks gorgeous, but he did make me laugh. Um, so then, obviously, I don't know what reminded me. I think I wanted to watch Titanic the other day. That was on the telly. So my name's Rose. There's only so much that I needed to hit me towards the Titanic. I dream of such random stuff anyway. But I kept saying to Gary, you need to cut your hair off as you're gonna drown. Like your hair's too long and thick that you're not gonna be able to swim to the top. And he was like, Rosie, that makes no sense. I was like, no, seriously, gal, honestly, when this boat goes down, you need to have your hair cut. And we was trying to find someone on the boat to cut his hair. It was such a weird dream. So anyway, got our carrots. Some of them are a little bit fatter than others, but that's the way the world is. I'm a little bit fatter than others, but there you go. <laughs> we all come in different shapes and sizes. There's no exception to a carrot. Um, so we've got them. And then, <laughs> oh no, I'm putting on my glue gun on me thing. Right, so second one, two, three. Fourth thing, not second thing, fourth thing. I just got some pegs for a pound. Now you've got loads of these. Now I'm telling you now, you are going to get obsessed with this craft. You honestly, you're going to get obsessed with this craft. So you just need to get some pegs. You're going to need to dismember them. Sorry, peggies. And then you're going to put them like this, back to back, rather than being like that, to make a peg. You're just going to turn them inside out like this. And we're going to glue a few of them together. So with my hot glue gun, going to glue a few of them together like so um i think you're going to need about four these pegs are a lot smaller than what i've used before so the ones i've got before well, i think from b&m they're slightly bigger wooden pegs but they're from the pound shop and it's you know shrink inflation everything's inflated in price therefore they're shrinking everything down to keep the prices up down yeah to keep the prices down yeah. So then we've got two. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue the bottom together like this and it'll create a V. Like so. And you're gonna have this V shape. Now, you're gonna need three for this. It's the same as the others, it was just the others were just a bit bigger. I love to do an Easter tour and hang out my little carrot one I made a couple of years, but actually it was about five, six years ago I made that. 
Right, and then we're just going to glue this one like normal, back to back again, inside out, however you call it. And then we are going to glue this one down like that. Now, this is the part where you either use some foliage that you already have. If you have foliage, you can get cheap foliage from the pound shop, to be fair. Or, dog, walking. I'm going to be using this, but if you have raffia as well, in the pound shop, they sell, um, I might have to sort the dog out, because sometimes he gets a bit carried away with himself, I don't tell him to stop. Bertie! been told off now right i'm going to use some of these my, some of my rosemary stems yeah, but they do have little potted plants in the power shop that you could use and dismember to do this i'm going to use three stems here i might even time up with a bit of string just to make it a bit easier rather than just going all in with the glue um but you could use raffia so they do have in the the easter section they have green raffia which is basically like shredded tissue that you can use you could even cut some card out to do this or you could use anything really to make the stems with you could use green string and like bundle it up like this to make like a um, look like leaves at the top. Oh, got itchy, itchy sides of my face there. And I'm gonna, in the gap at the back, I'm just gonna glue in there. And then I'm gonna stick my rosemaries in like this. And we've got cute little wooden carrots, which are like the cutest thing ever. I've got some orange paint. Like I say, you can get these tester pots from Pound Shop. They, or you can even use like a post paint. You can even colour these in because they're that wood with like a Sharpie, an orange Sharpie if you have one. Oh, I don't feel like that's a very carrot colour. It's a bit more terracotta ring. Let's get the orange Wilco one out and shall we? I wanted to go for a bit of a deeper colour. But the orange I wanted in there, they didn't have in stocks. This is retro orange. They did, oh, actually, it's a really nice orange. Just going to be using a makeup brush now i'm not going to be going in really like opaque with this like to cover the whole entirety of it i'm actually going to dab some of this off on a bit of paper because i want this to be really rustic and i'm just going to go over it ever so slightly almost like a stain And then on the sides, and then I'm sorry, but how cute. Got a bit of glue stuck to it, but once the glue dries, you just peel it off. How cute are these little carrots? How gorgeous are these? I mean, you could even make loads of these and then hang some string to these and then make some carrot bunting. Or, you know, if you wanted to make your Easter frame really, really decorative, you could glue these onto your Easter frame if you wanted to. You could even, I don't know, <laughs> Stick these to the Hessian bunting if you want, but I wanted to show you these because these are a cute little craft to make with children and you don't have to use hot glue. You can use just normal glue and just wait a little bit longer to let them dry in between. I would just recommend making loads of little pairs, like sticking them back to back, letting them dry and then going ahead making the craft. So we've got those as well. I'm gonna member, member? <laughs> I'm gonna member this together now. I'm gonna give this no, it's still wet, see? It's still wet, but it's fine. I'm going to glue on the bottom of my tray. I'm going to make my little Easter tray. And do you know what? I've even got some cupcakes in the house, which is a bit of a rarity because I normally eat them. Um, I've got some cupcakes. Make sure it's in the middle of the plate. And then, round the edge, you're going to have to take time to do this, round the edge of your candelabra <laughs> got shaky hands <laughs> make sure this is on straight as well press it down let it dry and then i'm gonna because i can touch this up while it's already on the um on the tray and then pop little bunny in the middle. And what you're gonna be left with is a really beautiful stand. And I have got cupcakes, so I'm gonna style it up. I'm not gonna style it up yet, actually. I was gonna style it up, but just because I'm tempted, I'll end up eating them. Um, and then I'll style this up at the end so you can see, but this is gonna look lovely. And if you don't want this so block colored, I've got a little cleaning toothbrush here. 
basically, this is what I used to clean with, not my teeth. This is just like around the taps and stuff. So get an old toothbrush, you can get them cheap anyway. If you dip your paintbrush in some paint and then you flick it, it makes like little speckled look. You could even make these like little speckled eggs. <sighs> Honestly, you probably can't even tell on the camera. That looks so cute. Like that looks so nice. Once that's got cakes on it, it's gonna look really lovely. That looks so pretty. I'm definitely gonna style that up once that's finished and show you. It's gonna look really nice. Um, another thing I wanted to show you as well, just a quick thing. It's really, really random. I'll show you everything once it's finished. I'll glue these on quickly onto the bunting and then I'll show you at the end of them all styled up like I keep saying. If you do want to make a little... I like when I do my table and I set it out with all food, I don't like to have everything flat because I don't think it looks visually very nice. But at the same time, I understand not everyone wants to be making cake stands. Not everyone wants to be, you know, buying things that are more tiered. I always go to the charity shops and get a lot of mine. Like I've got glass ones, porcelain ones, and I like to vary them out on the table when I do food. That will be one of my new collections now, for, but for Easter. But what I wanted to show you was, is I bought this pound shop bowl the other week um, and I didn't see the egg cups in there. Now, these are really lovely bowls. I think these are two pound and they come in like a beigey yellow sort of design. They're really nice. And they've got this lovely off-white creamy color on them and the little base. Now, when I saw these little egg cups, so I bought that the other week. When I saw these egg cups in there the other day, with the little bees on, I thought they're lovely, but they actually are the same colour as these. And I thought this is what I'm doing with mine, so I wanted to show you because it might be a little idea. I am going to be gluing the top edge of my little egg cup, and I'm going to give myself some few little tiered bowls, pop it into the centre because it does have the perfect size little hole at the bottom that this can pop into. It's exactly the same colour, it's glazed as well. And what you're gonna end up with is a little tiered bowl and the bees are obviously flying to the flower to pollinate, to get honey. And I just thought you could put like little mini eggs and stuff in this and it will stand up and it will just be like more, I don't know, I think it will look really, really pretty, more standing up. So that's what I done with mine, so I thought I'd show you that. But that's been today's video. I've right, got a little Easter stuff ready. And um, so the bunting is here. It looks really, really cute. The only thing is I did actually smudge this one a little bit. Bit annoying, but that's fine because I can touch that with a tiny bit of Hessian look colour paint. Um, also as well, look how cute this little frame looks set out. Even next to some really nice flowers. It just looks really beautiful. The little carrots. Obviously, you can make loads of these and do some bunting. But obviously, I'm limited for time on with Albert. Um, but I do have some that I made a couple years back. And I'll hang out in my Easter tour. Got a little bowl, nothing in this one, but look at this little cake stand, guys. How gorgeous does that look? I mean, to be completely honest with you, if you put that out on any site, people would be like, wow, I love your cake stand, that's lovely. Yet again, I do need to touch this up a tiny bit. I found the more paint I was putting on, the more I was taking off. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd show you because obviously, as always, I like to give you inspiration and ideas. Um, and I just thought these were really, really cute. And obviously, it's like less than £11 to make them all. And I just thought these are just gonna be lovely little compliments in your home. Um, so yeah. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video, guys. I've been Rosie Henshaw. Enjoy crafting, guys. Take care, see you later, bye.